A trip to the movies doesn't have to break the bank. You can get everything from tickets to concessions at a discount. CBS 5 Consumer Watch reporter Julie Watts with how to stretch your paycheck on entertainment. I have a seat. It won Best Picture, but that's not why Sean Wycliffe remembers the movie The King's Speech. It was a great movie, but the theater was just dead empty. There was only about two of us there. So the recent Berkeley grad and some friends came up with an idea based on the Priceline model. Sell movie seats that otherwise might not get sold. DealFlix is Priceline for movie tickets. Right now, 88% of movie theater seats are empty, so we'll partner with theaters. They'll give us their empty seats and often popcorn and soda, and we'll sell them on our iPhone app, Android app, or website for up to 60% off. Got it. And you're still early stages, right? It's been two years, a year and a half or so? Yeah, we launched a year and a half ago in July 2012, so we're still growing and going, but things are going really well. What's in it for them? I mean, I, I assume, uh, walk us through how the model works, how the pricing works, and I assume this is all happening in real time, right? Absolutely. So right now, 88% of movie theater seats are empty, and we'll partner with the movie theaters. Currently, we're letting the movie theaters set the pricing, so tickets and concessions can be up to 60% off. Sometimes they're 30 40% off. And they get to choose the show times, the movies. Now, typically, we get weekends, evenings, even opening weekends as well. People talk about homegrown businesses all the time, but this is really homegrown. You raised an initial $65,000 from friends uh, and family a little bit later on. Uh, how did that grow into what you have right now? Absolutely. So we started with our, our friends and family, me and my two co-founders, all of our parents are invested. And we got into a program called 500 Startups. So they gave us $50,000 and they, they kind of put us on the spotlight in, in Silicon Valley over here. And we got a lot of other angel investors and some seed investors since then. We're raising our Series A, and we're asking for $2.5 million for 20% of our company. This money is going to be used for hiring more engineers and salespeople so we can expand internationally and add a lot of product features. Now, you, you're a serial entrepreneur. You had started a company when you were in college. Very successful. You bought yourself a Ferrari, um, and then it failed. How has that influenced how you are running this company? Yeah, that's a, that's a great story. I definitely failed and had some success, some moderate success, but... I think when it came to deal flicks, the way that it's affected me here is to appreciate everything, especially the money that comes in mm -hmm. um, and the money that we raise and the people that I'm working with because I used to just think money was easy and I took it for granted and would blow money on things like you mentioned the Ferrari and my brother and I bought this million dollar house and all of these things. But nowadays I, I live a pretty frugal life. I live in a small apartment and drive a Camry around for the most part of the time. So And the money's going into the company to build this company. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a van right now that's going around the country signing up theaters. Is that you know we, we live so much in the digital age, we can do so much on email, et cetera, but really getting out there and meeting people, that's how you're making your deals? Yeah, so this was all my co-founder Kevin's idea. He's the one in charge of our theaters. And so during the first six months, he looked back and found, hey, you know, most of our theaters required some face time to get a deal done. And so he decided to trade his Acura in for a minivan and go on a road trip for two months. And then they decided to live in the back of the van because it was more convenient. So they'd actually drive during the day, sleep at night in the back of the van and take a shower at 24 Hour Fitness and work out and go on their day. So they only not only got more done, but they got in pretty good shape too. And you're signing up all these theaters now that way. Right. They're, they're going around the country and doing that. In fact, they're here in Austin right now and they're gonna be going around the East Coast for the next month. So in 2001, I went to UC Berkeley. And as a freshman, I started selling long distance phone service. Now, one week I made over $6,000. So as a 19 year old, I ended up buying a Porsche, dropping out of school and moving to LA. Now this was, this was crappy long distance service. Nobody wanted it. So to sell it, I'd actually go to the ghetto and we'd pay customers $10 if they'd sign up. We made 100 bucks each time. So we built this business. By the time I turned 21, we got it to over a million dollars in revenue. And I ended up buying a Ferrari and a million dollar house in Orange County. And life was great until the long distance company declared bankruptcy. So I actually lost everything. Well, I did keep the Porsche. But I had to start over. This time, I went back to UC Berkeley again. No surprise. So I'm a returning college student now. I don't know why everyone's laughing. That's fine. <laughs> That's me. It's true. And when I came back to college, I was skinny, I was sober, and I was single. So I started watching a ton of movies. I mean a crap ton of movies. Comedies, dramas, good ones, bad ones. First week out, five weeks in. Cowboys versus Aliens, loved it. Tommy <laughs> <laughs> Lee Jones, never made a bad movie, ever. 
And one thing I noticed was this, that there were a ton of empty seats in the movie theater. In fact, 88% of seats right now are empty. 88%. But at the same time, over $40 billion are spent on movie tickets, popcorn, and soda every single year. That doesn't even include nachos. So I had the idea for Deal Flix. It's Priceline for movie tickets. I knew I could build this business because I've built things before. For 50% of our, our, our customers buy one concession or more for full price. Over 25% buy two or more concessions for full price, and around 10% buy three or more concessions for full price. So how's it going? Things have really been growing. We had 40x growth this last year. In fact, last year we did about 500 tickets a month. In December, we broke over 9,700 tickets, and last month we broke over 16,000 tickets in February. Things have been growing really well. In fact, we just broke over a million dollar annual revenue run rate this past month, so that was really exciting. How are we doing it? We have a lot of different marketing methods we use. Mobile's been really big for us. In fact, we came out with our iPhone app last year and it's been featured four times by Apple so far. And we came out with our Android app last year and it was featured once by Google at Google I.O. Our team's also been growing. We now have 10 full-time on our team, four engineers, a couple of them are in the back over there. See Mike over there with his deal fixed flag. And we also have four salespeople and a couple of part-time marketing people. We have some great investors. 500 Startups is one of our investors. Media Camp and Warner Brothers, another investor of ours, including XG Ventures, Seamer Ventures, and some others. How do you guys compete and keep people going to the theaters? Is that kind of a dying breed? People are, are going to probably turn to their computers more? Or is there still an audience for folks who want to go to a theater? Well, I think there's definitely still an audience for people that want to go to the theater. Right now, the movie theater industry worldwide, just with movie tickets and concessions, is about a $40 billion industry. Movie chains are not embracing the new technology. You guys are trying to adjust into that, but some of the, the movie theaters are still kind of, I guess, what do they do? They still want to publish the Times in the newspaper? You know, there's all sorts of different things that they're doing. It's just unfortunate because a lot of the movie theater owners, they're great at film, they're great at production, they understand the business, but now with Facebook, Twitter, the web, these things have just kind of creeped up on everyone. And so one of the things that we do too is we help theaters with that process. We're actually helping a lot of movie theaters develop websites and things of that nature. And in fact, at the theater conventions that we go to, we do a lot of seminars where we train them how to use Facebook, how to use Twitter, things like that. So we're trying to help them in multiple ways. Uh, you mentioned uh, you're obviously collecting a lot of data on users, the types of movies that they are interested in. Is there any room for a, a partnership or a deal with the actual studios themselves, a Disney, a Warner, a Comcast, something like that? Absolutely. So this last weekend I was at South by Southwest and spent a good majority of the weekend talking with execs from Warner Brothers. We've spoken at Disney as well, and as you mentioned, they're very interested in the kind of data that we have. Let me talk about one of our movie theaters, the Grand Lake Movie Theater in Oakland. So far, we've increased their... <laughs> That's awesome. It's my favorite theater, too. We've so far increased their online and mobile movie ticket sales by over 40%, and we're on track to double them within the next few months. Oh, my God! Yeah! What's going on? The beer. I get it. Last up. So we're going to double not only their movie ticket sales, but by the end of the year, we're going to do this with over 200 movie theaters. That's what we do. We partner with movie theaters and we double their online and mobile ticket sales. So by the end of this year, by doing so, we'll have over $5 million in annualized bookings flowing through Dealflix. In the long run, we're going national. By doing so, we'll have over $500 million in annual bookings flowing through Dealflix. Right now, we're taking 10 to 20% of whatever comes in, but of course, that can go up. We're more than just you know discounting tickets. It's more about right pricing. Um, it's more about yield management. And then eventually we want to definitely take over the world and, uh, you know, kind of have one government that is DealFlix and kind of take over all the different countries.